an old Chinese proverb. He who rides the tiger often finds it difficult to dismount. Madam Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and anybody with a tiger. <coughs> Some people's tigers are their hobbies. Other people's tigers are their vices or addictions. Well, the tiger in the Dolman household is a literal orange and white cat named Olive. While my wife, Carla, has been enamored with the cat ever since she adopted him five years ago, my relationship with Oliver has been a little bit closer to the mathematical law of transitivity. I love my wife. My wife loves the cat. Therefore, ipso facto, QED, and the other things my math professor said in college in order to sound smart, I love my wife's cat. But this afternoon, I want to get something off of my chest. To paraphrase the great philosopher from Twisted Sister, I'm not going to take it anymore. I hate my wife's cat. This afternoon, we are going to explore some of the valuable lessons that I have learned from riding the tiger. Lesson number one, a cat in the way is annoying all day. <laughs> Oliver has the unique characteristic of being able to lie around the house in the most inconvenient places possible. He manages to station himself at the top of the stairs in such a way that it's impossible for me to go over or around him. Even simple tasks such as washing the dishes or making supper is made more difficult because Oliver manages to station himself exactly 4.5 centimeters behind my back leg. If I back up and accidentally step on his tail, if I don't break my ankle tripping over him, the shriek that he lets out will shatter all of the bones in the lower half of my body. <laughs> I hate my wife's cat. <laughs> but there are some advantages to having a cat that's always around. It means he is always at the door waiting for me when I come home from work. We all lead stressful lives here in Washington, D.C. And sometimes it is nice to come home from the 9 to 5 strife to somebody who is happy to see. While we're losing focus, we need to get back to our lessons. <laughs> Lesson number two. A cat who resonates is a cat who irritates. When Carla adopted Oliver from a Columbus, Ohio pet shelter five years ago, the first line on the card read, Orange and White Domestic short hair Cat. What she failed to tell me was the second line on the car. This is the loudest cat in the world. <laughs> I am constantly bombarded with meow, meow, meow. Getting dressed in the morning is met with meow, meow, meow. Getting within 4.5 meters of his food bowl is met with meow, meow, meow. Now you think that picking up his food bowl to get him some food would make the meowing go away. Well, you would be wrong. It only makes the meowing louder and more intense. Meow! 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 I hate my wife's cat. But sometimes the meowing is accompanied by some cute activities also. He usually meows when he's chasing the laser pointer throughout the living room. <laughs> he meows when he wraps his leg around the staircase banister and bats at it with his back legs. He usually meows when he gets on his back and wants me to rub his belly. But we're losing focus. Once again, we need to move on to our third and final lesson. A cat on the bed equals a cat on the head. <laughs> a few years ago, I had a co-worker who would tell me a story about how it was a common occurrence for him to wake up with one of his two kittens lying on top of his head. So when my then girlfriend of seven months said she wanted to adopt Oliver, my senses were immediately peaked. Even though I would not propose for another year and a half, I knew there was a decent chance I could someday be living with this woman-cat combination. <laughs> so Carla agreed to the rule. Oliver would never be allowed on top of the bed. Fast forward to 2013, Oliver has free reign of the house. <laughs> he jumps on top of the furniture. He jumps on top of the dining room table. He even jumps on top of the bed 
so that he can meow directly into my face. <laughs> I hate my wife's cat. But there have been some major changes in the Dolman household. Carlo was given the opportunity of a lifetime to serve a 12-month assignment as an agricultural advisor in the Kunduz province of Afghanistan meaning that Oliver and I would be left alone at home <laughs> for an entire year. Even though Carla and I got to talk fairly regularly, it still got pretty lonely on those cold DC winter nights. And because Oliver had free reign of the house, it also meant that he would come up and jump on my lap. And sometimes it was nice to have a little bit of companionship. But we're losing focus on the I hate my wife's cat. I hate my wife's cat. You can see whether it's a cat in the way, a cat who meows, or a cat on the bed, that I hate my wife's cat. Now I know what you're thinking. Tony, you don't actually hate your wife's cat. You like all of her. You like that he meets you when you come home from work. That he meows when you play with him. That he jumps up on your lap. And while it took your wife being a hemisphere away, and you desperately missing her, were you able to form a relationship with an animal that you never thought was possible? And while you're trying to maintain this tough guy image, and you would never, ever admit it in front of your wife, maybe it is more the transitivity. Maybe you actually love your wife's cat. Well, do you know what I have to say to that? He who rides the tiger often finds it difficult to dismount. Madam Contest. <laughs>